So, I couldn't get this out earlier because I was using DaVinci Resolve to edit the video, but my PC couldn't handle that, so I decided to switch to HitFilm Express like during mid-production, and I've been really busy with high school. So, yeah, <clears throat> now that's all I have to say. Uh, enjoy the video. So, Steel Raven 7 decided to give us an early Christmas present. With the Early Access 23 update, we finally got the second part of the Spec Ops update, and I have to say, there is a lot to go through. So, let's start with the boring stuff first. We now have a lot more graphics settings to mess around with. People with high-end PCs will be excited to hear that there is now anti-aliasing. The ones included are FXAA and SMAA. For some reason, SSAA and MSAA are not included. If you want to see more information about anti-aliasing, I highly recommend you check out this 3 clicks fill up video. It might be for CSGO, but it applies to Ravenfield as well. So, moving on. We have post-processing effects in their own category underneath everything else. Instead of Bloom just being a checkbox, it now has high and low settings, though this is only helpful for visibility when you play with night turned on. And for the last setting, Ambient Occlusion, which for some reason, instead of being just a simple checkbox, is now a drop-down menu with settings ranging from low to ultra, and for some reason when using low, it tanks my frame rate, and I couldn't even see a difference to top it all off. So, with all that boring stuff out of the way, let's talk about some bug fixes. If you remember from my last video, I talked about how sometimes the strictly lock-on launchers would fall straight down, as if you were using the underpowered railgun, which is something you can get from pirating the game. Well, fear no more, as this issue has been fixed, so that makes me wonder if Steel Raven 7 saw my video, or if it was just a well-known bug. For all you guys with 4K monitors and a PC fast enough to get a smooth and consistent frame rate, then you will be glad to know that the dialogue portraits now use a higher quality compression. Also mentioned in the changelog was a bug with the grenades, so you would throw a phantom grenade after you ran out of ammo. This is something that I had noticed, but never really cared for, and it was kind of really a rare occurrence, but sometimes this would softlock people's games. Now this is something that would happen to me, but only whenever I was playtesting a map I made using the in-game editor. And it wasn't really a softlock as much as it was a straight up crash. And to all of you guys who like to take screenshots, you can now toggle the night vision goggles on and off in photo mode, and the screen won't go black when you exit photo mode. So, this means that it's easier to take screenshots with the night vision goggles. One of the greatest changes in this update is you can now fire your weapons in the backseat of the transport helicopter. And hey, it's another thing that I mentioned before. In fact, I think I mentioned it in my Early Access 22 video. Alright, now I'm certain that Steel Raven 7 saw my video. But this change isn't perfect. You can't lean, and for some reason whenever you look up or down, the gun will tilt in that direction. And if you didn't know, bullets come out of the gun and not your face. That's why when turning the crosshair on, it moves with your gun. Now, on to the good stuff. Have any weapons been added to the game? Yes, but it wasn't another SMG or shotgun like I suggested, but rather a new explosive in the form of C4. And yes, it is sticky. One thing that was made to better suit the C4 is now when exiting a vehicle, they don't immediately break, and instead rely on friction and gravity to slow it down. So this means you can strap a jeep with C4, drive it into enemies, ditch it, and then detonate the C4, which you do by holding the ADS button and pressing fire. The only issue with this is you'll do a slight zoom, so I would change that. Same with the melee weapons, except maybe the resistance sword, you could make it behave like the blood skull blade from Skyrim, where it would shoot out a small beam of energy that wouldn't travel far, and you could even make it harmless and just knock down enemies instead. I'd be fine with that, since it would give an otherwise useless weapon some advantage, which... I mean, all it can do is impale people and swing slowly, which kind of sucks. Finally, let's talk about the Spec Ops additions slash improvements. Teammates in Spec Ops will now plant C4 on vehicles if you order them to, but it has to be an objective vehicle. Speaking of which, we only got one new objective with this update, and that is Neutralized Patrol. If you didn't know, there are squads of enemies that will patrol about. Sometimes they'll be in an APC, an MG Jeep, and sometimes they're on foot. And whenever there is a squad on foot, there is usually a lot of them, and for some strange reason, there will be clones of soldiers in a slightly offset position from each other. I'm not sure why this happens, but knowing Steel Raven, he'll probably fix them before I get this video out. I mean, this guy fixes bugs he didn't even know existed in the game. Anyways, there is now a new ally to assist Talon in their Spec Ops missions. They call him Eyes, and what he does is provide you with intelligence on enemy patrol movements, such as alerting you if a patrol is about to spot you. Uh, that's according to the changelog. He isn't useful for vehicles because they'll always show up on your map, 
but if you play a large bumpy terrain like Dust Bowl or Archipelago, he can be useful, but only if you play on like normal or hard, where Raven Troop spotting you out in the open typically means death for you. And my god, is the aim punch from getting shot insane. If only that hero armor could do something about it. Anyways, Eyes doesn't actually appear on the map as far as I know, and there isn't a variant of him when playing as Raven. But there is an advisor form, and his name is just three question marks. Steel Raven says this is for an added bit of challenge. For an added bit of realism, or attention to detail I guess, Eyes won't wear his night vision goggles when you play a map on day. A very welcome change, in my opinion, is that you will spawn approximately 200 meters from the closest objective. So now you don't have to worry about playing Dust Bowl and having to walk 10 minutes to get to an objective. When you get a victory or a defeat, it will show that super amazing cutscene from Conquest. Speaking of winning, there are now two ways to get an ending to Spec Ops, and I will just go ahead and read what the change log says. There are now two possible endings to Spec Ops, either Quick Victory, where the game instantly ends when all objectives are completed, or helicopter exfiltration. Quick victory will only fire if all attackers are still alive when the game ends. On large levels, you will also need to be unseen by enemies when the game ends. Helicopter exfil victory will fire otherwise, where you need to get to the exfil location and enter the helicopter. The balance slider, which is used to, well, balance the game, now actually affects how many members of Talon there are. Now, I don't know if having four or five will get you the helicopter ending, because not everybody will be able to fit. It might play the cutscene, but I don't know. I haven't tested it at all. So, normally this is where I would end the video, but uh, instead I'm going to go over the bugs again, in case uh, I didn't mention them already, and because it's convenient to have them all in one place. So let's start with the transport helicopter. If you ride in the back seat, you cannot lean like you can in the jeeps, the quad, or the rib. When the helicopter changes altitude, your weapon will point in that direction. So if you go up, your gun will start to point upwards, and if it goes down, well, it'll go down. Looking up and down also has some weird amplified effect on the weapon movement in your hands. For comparison, here's me on my test map in and out of a helicopter looking up and down. According to my friend who plays Ravenfield a lot more than I do, he says that placing C4 on a slope primitive object will stretch the C4. I was able to recreate this bug, but it's really a map specific thing, so it may not be game breaking, and the C4 works normally aside from this visual bug. Sometimes objectives will show up on incorrect capture points. For example, this game here, it tells me to destroy the bomber, but the bomber is actually at a point we captured earlier. Now, from my testing, I haven't had any objectives that were impossible to complete solely because of bugs or technical problems, so you don't need to worry about that. So, um, I just want to say thanks for watching the video, and uh, I guess you could subscribe if you enjoyed the video or not, or if you enjoy my other content. 
uh, leave likes, all that other stuff. But I do have an announcement to make. Me and my friend have made a group channel together where we'll just be kind of posting uh, whatever for like the next video or two. I'll just be like kind of announcing it just in case people haven't, you know, heard it already. But yeah, I'll include links to that in the description below. So yeah, check out the channel, maybe subscribe. Uh, it's just going to be like collaborations we do together, like large projects and all of that. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.